everybody, it's Termania Black, and um, it's been over a year <laughs> since I've watched Sasaki to Miyano, Sasaki and Miyano. It's been a long time. Um, I went back and looked at the playlist. The, the room has changed slightly. My hair has grown out. I'm wearing glasses. I, you know, I've aged 40 years. <laughs> But no, it's been over a year um, since the OVA of Sasaki to Miyano, and it's been well over a year since the season ended. It gets hard to believe it's been that long, but it has. And I have been a busy woman, but I was told that Sasaki to Miyano, there was a graduation arc movie coming out, and I was like, well, when it comes to streaming, I'll give it a reaction, and it is now on streaming. <laughs> so... So it's time to react to it. I'm super excited. An hour-long Sasaki and Miyano venture. Um, I honestly have not read the manga for Sasaki and Miyano uh, ever since the season in OVA, OVA ended. I haven't looked into it anymore because I knew that there would be more content come out because of how popular it was. So I thought I'll just wait until it comes out and then we'll do a reaction to it. So I'm really, really excited. Um, but I have to say a special thanks, as I did with season one in the OVA, to Mary Seth. Uh, Mary Seth over on Twitter, who is with um, September Scanlations, they have done their own uh, translation of the Sasaki and Miyano content, uh, making it more, more like the manga, supposedly, and more BL, which I'm always a fan of. I'm like, yes, please do that for me. Let's do this. Because, you know, sometimes I usually go through Crunchyroll or a streaming service, and sometimes they're translations and their uh, subtitles are on par and sometimes they are a bit lacking so I do I did really really enjoy the September scanlations for season one and so it seems fitting that we would do it for the graduation arc movie I'm assuming it's of Sasaki graduating that seemed to have been built up in season one but I'm so excited to see these characters again I'm so excited for the romance I'm so excited for bubbly things I've been watching a lot of heavy stuff on my channel the last several months it's been really depressing <laughs> Not really depressing. I've enjoyed myself immensely, but it has been some heavy, heavy drama, heavy suspense. Romania needs some fluffy BL in her life, and I feel like this has come at the right time. <laughs> so, with that being said, I'm super excited to see what all is in store with this movie. I'm super excited. I It's going to feel good to go back to these characters for a little bit, especially give us a little taste of some BL before Jane Yu Yowie for 2024, right? Just to, to savor a little piece of it. I'm excited. But before we start, I want to give a very quick shout out over to our philanthropy tier on Patreon. Um, people on Patreon, they support me each month and allow me to buy the official release of anime and manga, as well as doing all of the different fees and stuff that comes along with if you're a reactor, it adds up. And so you all help me pay my bills and um, help to support me and do awesome things that I love on this channel, which is talk about anime and manga and Don Moi and Don Mai with you all. So yay. But I'm super excited. Um, I feel like this is a perfect little a little fall festive thing, even though it's a graduation arc movie and came out in the summer, but we're going to ignore that. <laughs> so thank you very much to Edgar, Dana, Alex Cornejo, Kiri, Be Happy, Shimoyama, Nameless Monster, Ash Got Snow Bitches, Trails, Tyrone Tyrone, Anime Annie, Eric Sunspots, Anna Goob, uh, Translucent Men, and Matthew Palfinier. Thank you all so, so much for all of your kindness and support. I truly appreciate it. All of my love. So yeah, um, I'm, gonna... <laughs> I'm really excited. Very excited to see what's going to happen. Um, I'm very excited to see what all is in store with this. It's an hour long, so calling it a movie is a little bit of a stretch. But I always feel like whenever there's a BL, they're like, oh yeah, it's a movie. And I'm like, it's 60 minutes long. I'm like, is it a movie? It's a bare bones movie, but we'll take what we can get, right? Mm-hmm. So... I'm excited, y'all. I hope you all are, too. But we're not going to waste any more time. We are going to dive right into this and see what we get. I'm so excited. I've avoided all spoilers for this, so I'm going in completely blind, which is exciting. And so we're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's uh, do this. Oh, my God. That was absolutely Precious. <laughs> I needed that. I needed that. I needed that jolt of serotonin. Just get it right in the vein. Just give me the sugar. Give me all of it. I, whenever people, I, I thought about a lot of things watching uh, this reaction, watching this 
this movie for Sasaki and Miyano. I thought of a lot of things. And one is that I there's a series that's going on. It's a series right now. And I, I've been reading the comic for it because I like the comic a lot. And it's called Heartstopper. And there is, we've been talking about it in the Discord. We have been a big lengthy discussion about it because apparently the creator of Heartstopper, which I read the comic, the creator of Heartstopper at one point said that Heartstopper isn't a BL because BL is yaoi and yaoi is sexually explicit and smutty and that's not what they're about. One, it's kind of ironic that they said that because now if you're reading Heartstopper the comic, it's getting a little, it's getting a little spicy and I'm like, hmm, that's funny that you say that. But the other thing is I kind of like got a little bit mad about that because I feel like BL gets a bad name a lot because a lot of people think that it's just yaoi and it's just smut. And granted, there's a lot of that out there, but also there's a lot of heterosexual romance that is smut. So let's be, let's not clutch our pearls and pretend like we're better than other series because we don't have that. But the thing that kind of frustrated with me was that I instantly thought of Sasaki and Miyano. I'm like, Sasaki and Miyano, it's romantic and there's kissing and there's some sensuality that is like, you know, d just give it to me all day long. But it's not smutty at all. It's so wholesome and pure and sweet and sugary. And anytime somebody thinks that BL is just yaoi, I want to like point them to this and be like, look, here you go. This is about as wholesome and sweet as it gets. It, what else do you want? Do you want them to just like be like Amish and like sit five feet from each other on a wagon at 11 o'clock at night for, for 10 months until they decide to start their courtship? What do you want? So I, I get frustrated by stuff like that, but I think of a lot of things with this series and there's a lot of things that Saki and Miyano do that I wish that other series that aren't BL would do <laughs> and be a BL, but what can we do? But yeah, I this was so good. I loved this so much. And uh, first of all, I'm talking about Kagura and Hirano. I want to just, for all of Hirano's intelligence and all of Hirano's brains and everything, I want to smack him upside the head and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> That, that half of me wants to read all of Kagira and Hirano and see all of their misadventures. And the other half of me wants to stay as far away from it because I think it will drive me insane. I think that I will be like, Hirano, can you not see that Kagira is madly in love with you? And you, you're roommates with him. How do you not see this? I'm just like, ah, ah. But, but, I mean as somebody that's probably been in Kagura's position and likes somebody and they've been oblivious, I get it, but man, is it so frustrating. And I'm like, uh, and, and then the thing of it is, is, you know, I know many heterosexual friends that get each other earrings as gifts and can't wake up unless they're wearing them and caress their earlobe. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just like, oh, I'm like, Hirano, he like, like sensually touched your earlobe and was like, I can't wake up unless you wear my earrings. <laughs> Kagira is just like, he's so head over heels in love with Hirano, who is oblivious. So oblivious. Hirano's never read a BL before, so he does not see the, the telltale signs that Miano notices. And now we see from Miano's perspective how Miano is like internally screaming every time he's around both of them, being like, do you not see what's happening? And the, the thing that's so torturous is that they're roommates, right? That's the torturous thing, because here's the thing. I've been in the situation of Kagira and Hirano where I have fallen for a roommate. Been there, done that, it didn't end well. <laughs> and that's the problem. Like with Sasaki and Miyano, they live in different houses. There is a distance there. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. There, There is that distance. And so it's not, but it's not like a long distance, right? They can go visit each other like every day if they wanted to. It's not like they're traversing across towns to go see each other. So even with them being in a relationship, it feels like they're dating. It feels like a courtship. It feels like, you know, you go to my house, I go to your house and our families like get to know each other. It feels like a, an authentic relationship in that regard. Um, whenever you live with someone and you try to develop a relationship, one of two things happen. Either it works and it leads to the relationship continuing and developing or it doesn't work and then things are insanely awkward. And usually it doesn't end well. Like luckily for me, my roommate and I were very close to graduating and moving apart. 
and we did. So when the relationship didn't work out, it was super awkward. And then we parted ways like a month later. And then our friend, we, we, we're friends now. Like they're married. <laughs> they're married. He's married, has a wife. We're friends. It's fine. But at the time it was very awkward for a couple months because we we're like, oh, this didn't work out. And now, uh, and then what do we do? So I can definitely understand why Kagura would not want to confess because if Hirano doesn't feel mutual about it, and is like, oh no, then it will be awkward. And then chances are they won't be roommates anymore. They'll find, they'll have to split up and find different roommates because they don't want to be awkward and weird. And the thing about it is Kagura seems very open-minded and an honest person <laughs> like what Hirano's attracted to and seems like he's just like, oh yeah, I love him. Absolutely. And the thing that's so frustrating is everybody assumes when Kagura is talking that who he loves is a woman. They're like, oh, you have a girlfriend this. And he's like, no, I'm in love, but I don't have a girlfriend. Like not, he's not lying, but he's not saying that I'm in love with a man. And the thing that's kind of sad at this point is that even though Hirano is open-minded about Sasaki and Miyano and he's open-minded with his friends being like oh it's cool that you guys have this relationship I support you I'm here for you the question is has Hirano thought about his own sexuality in a way that would be remotely open to trying a relationship with Kagura or when Kagura confesses would he be like oh I don't like guys and it just like just derails and falls apart right I feel like you know in a lot of BL series you have different couples and different couples have different um they have different ways that their relationship functions what I like about Sasaki and Miyano is that it's a mixed bag you have Ogasawara who has a girlfriend who's like totally into all of this um I would be her I would be her I'd be like I'd want a boyfriend but I'd be like let me let me hear about all the BL things please I, I need an Ogasawara, <laughs> basically. But I I feel like you have that relationship. Then you have um, Toshiro, who is not into guys. He's He wants a girlfriend. And then you have Sasaki and Miyano, and you have Kagura and Hirano. And Hirano, we don't even know about. We know Kagura's down. Kagura's ready to go. But we don't know about Hirano. And then we have the president, whose brother is gay, and he's, you know, he's not himself, but he understands and relates to it. I like that Sasaki and Miyano is a mixed bag. Um, because a lot of BL, it's just gay people together, which is not wrong. Don't get me wrong. That's how a lot of friend circles are, you know. But I like that in the world of Sasaki and Miyano, it's acceptable in their friend groups with multiple different types of sexualities. And it's all treated as right, as fine, as good, you know. And I like that a lot because I feel like in some BL, the characters kind of get isolated into these little pods and they feel like they're all separate from the rest of the world, which is, I'm certain, mimicking a lot of the real world, but I like that Sasaki Miyano kind of, it's like, Sasaki Miyano is kind of like the Star Trek of BL. It's imagining a world where there can be all these sexualities hanging around each other and it's not a big deal. Everybody is supportive and nobody's objective and it's all working out. It's the Star Wars, <laughs> it's a Star Trek, not Star Wars, the Star Trek of BL. And I'm here for it, right? I'm here for it. And I like that the major, the major conflict in this movie was the sister saying, like the sister lashing out out of reflex and then, but then she like immediately apologizes and is like the best human being about it. And I'm like, this is, this is Star Trek. This is like, this is the imaginative future where everything gets solved and we communicate and we, we deal with things rationally like human beings should. I'm here for it. Give me this escapism. It's sadly not like that all the time in our own world, but it should be. This is what things should be like, you know. But going back to Hirano and Kagura, I just, God, it could not be more obvious. And Kagura is so perfect. He's just so wonderful. And I'm like, Hirano. And Hirano's so soft around him. He grumbles. He's grumbly. I like when they first meet and he's just like, I haven't had my coffee yet. I'm like, can relate to Hirano. But he's so caring and kind and soft, which is a totally different vibe than we see him around Sasaki and Miyano, where he's like the, the senpai that's like got the steel nerve, you know? So I like that. I like seeing this kind of more vulnerable, softer side of Hirano around Kagura. And Kagura is just milking it for all it's worth. And I mean, can you blame him, right? I like the roommate of Kagura, the roommate that has the magenta hair. 
I really love that roommate's design. It looks like they probably related to Haruichi and uh, Ryo from Ace of the Diamond. They just have that look about them. It's great. He's like, I think I'm in love. And he's like, you've going, been going on about how amazing you are and you only think you're in love. And poor Miano's like, oh my God, he's talking about Hirano. So yeah, I there's a part of me that wants to see more with Hirano and Kagura and for Kagura to realize that no, he doesn't just think he's in love. He actually is in love. And for him and Hirano to talk things out and for Hirano to question, you know, do I like Kagura back? Because when they when they hang out and study together, it's like you guys like each other, essentially. Why are we in denial? Like, I, Kagura's in denial, but Hirano is oblivious. I'm like, oh my God. It was just giving me all of the 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 Don Mai MXTX vibes of the oblivious protagonist that doesn't realize that they are in love or that the person they love loves them back. It's like, you know, and then poor Miano is just like internally screaming, thinking about this, right? It's great. I will say that the, the cookie scene with Kagura and Hirano, I instantly thought of Momo from Free. And I was like, in Free, Momo was wanting to get cookies from Go. And... <laughs> He never got them, and I was like, man, he'd be jealous now. But they just, it's just their chemistry is so good. But there is a part of me, like, th this this relationship between Kagura and Hirano is, like, teetering on the edge of a knife, where it's either going to tilt into a confession, and they're both okay with it and mutual, like Sasaki and Miyano, or it's going to teeter on the edge of the knife, and it's going to become Ink City. <laughs> Which I don't ever imagine angst in Sasaki and Miyano. I'm like, angst? What in this series? But I, in a lot of BL, you have multiple couples, what I was getting at, and each couple kind of approaches relationships from a different way. I'll use Given as an example. And Given, you have the older couple of like Aki and Haruki, who like are the more experienced 20 year olds. They're experiencing love in a different way. It's more mature, it's more sexual. And then you have like Hiragi and Shizu who are also having a very sexual relationship, but it's like young and passionate and impulsive. And you don't think about it, you just do it. And then you have Oenayama and Mafuyu who's in like the sugar-coated like puppy dog love where everything is just like, oh my gosh, you touched my hand, ah! And having like the giggle fits, right? So they approach love in different ways. And you think about the series um, like Love Nest, like Engage, like Catch Game or Sayonara Game. You think about those, or Catch World, you think about those couples and how they approach love from different angles and the different tropes in BL. So with Sasaki and Miyano, I could see Kagura and Hirano being the more angsty relationship because you have, and then they were roommates, and what do you do with that scenario? Because I've read enough fan fiction to, to know the roommate's trope. And usually it ends up leading to them having a deeper bond and a bigger connection. But you gotta go through angst to get there. Because there is that doubt and uncertainty of, oh my god, if this doesn't work out, are we even going to be friends again? And it's a very real question. And then you have the puppy dog, like, relationship of Sasaki and Miyano. But this, this movie went in so many great directions. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. The idea of, I was getting a lot of Daokusei vibes, which if you've not read Daokusei or Classmates, do it. It's amazing. It's on my shelf right there. It is fan freaking tastic. It is the much more spicier version of this. Um, if you, it's not smutty necessarily, but it's definitely more spicy and it definitely goes into a lot more sexual themes with their characters than Sasaki and Miyano do. So if you want to, if you want to graduate from Sasaki and Miyano, I would say Daokusei or Classmates is what you should graduate to. Because that series takes the high school, you know, romance and then expands it to, okay, well, after one person graduates or we both graduate, where does our relationship go? And that's what I kind of am excited about if there's more Sasaki and Miyano content of seeing where their relationship goes. Now that Miyano's still in high school and Sasaki graduates, what kind of problems will they have to face as a couple? What kind of hurdles will they have to overcome with their distance? What will that do? Will some new kid come to the school and try to hit on Miyano? Will somebody try to hit on Sasa and Sasa uh, Shun Shunpei? I like Shunpei. Um, Shunpei. Oh, Shunpei. Um, how will that relationship develop 
now that they're out of high school, or at least that Sasaki is out of high school. And I think there's a lot you can do with that. The sky's the limit. You have a lot of scenarios you can come up with, but I was definitely getting those Dalkuse vibes in this. But damn it, um, of the two covers that he pulls out, I mean, of the two manga that Miyano pulls out for Sasaki to take, the, the one with the rose was definitely the, the right choice. That was the better cover of it. The other one looks like a stand-up comedy act. It looks more like um, Nozaki-kun than anything. The one guy, I love the cover of the BL where the guy with the dark hair is like offering a rose to the guy and the guy's like, no. And I'm like, but he's blushing as he says no. Come on now. He's like in stark denial. Mm -hmm. It's a good luck charm. I just, I love how much more physical that the two of them are getting now that they're in this relationship. But their relationship, again, is like literally the most wholesome, the most they've done as a couple is kiss. Kiss and the most sensual hand movements since Mo Dao Zushi that I have seen on screen. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. like, yes, please. Yes, all of these things. Because yeah, and we get Hanazawa coming in. Um, I like that we got more with um, Tashiro in this, that he's been working in a bathhouse and that he's been brushing up on his ping pong skills. I, I like that we get a little bit more with his character. I like the green haired guy. He has like little devil horns or cat ears hair sticking out. The green haired uh, classmate does. It's really super cute and it's a unique design. I like him. And then of course we have the one guy that has the girlfriend. Um, I His green eyes are so pretty. I love it. I, I like that he at the end is the one that catches Miyano getting kissed by Sasaki. Um, Sasaki and he tells Ogo Ogusawara's girlfriend he's like let me tell you what I saw and she's like oh my god and Ogusawara's like mm. I it's interesting how Ogusawara is framed in this because for a second it almost seemed like he was going to disapprove of Sasaki dating Miyano but then what we find out is that he doesn't want to think about his best friend <laughs> and his boyfriend like that because his girlfriend's gone on and on about all of these tropes and all of these things he's like I don't want to imagine Sasaki and Miano doing these things. No. And I kind of get that. Like, you don't want to imagine your best friend in a sexual relationship. The funny thing is, they've not been. So that's the kind of funny thing about it all. It's all very innocent and timid, right? So then we see, um, there are so many cats in this. <laughs> so many cats in this. But they go into, they talk about, you know, different things that they like and they, Miano and Sasaki ask each other if they prefer long hair or short hair and I honestly thought like Sasaki was trying to see if he should grow his hair out but then he tells Miano I love that he tells Miano that even though he'd like to run his hand through his long hair which is always a good thing to say um he says he'd prefer to see his hair short so they could see Miano's face and after Miano in season one went through all of that personal image struggle with how he looks the fact that Sasaki says I want to see your face and see you for you says everything, right? And he even cuts his hair by the end of it. His hair is shorter at graduation, I'm pretty sure. But damn, Sasaki and them hands. Them hands. See me with these hands. Like I'm getting like just in the words of Tatiana, see me with these hands. Oh my God. I, because here's the thing, right? I, I could read the smuttiest of smuts the smuttiest, the spiciest, I could read that all day long. But I'm kind of on, I mean, I am on the, the asexual spectrum. And so I'm not really in real life sexually attracted to anybody, honestly. And I've always been someone that if I'm reading something romantic, I could read the smuttiest, filthiest thing you give me and go, oh, well, okay. But the things that get me are like little things like this, like the hands, like him like sensually, like touching the back of Miano's neck and like raking his hands slowly across his and like just the the things, it reminded me, like I said, of Modao Zushi where it's just the hand touching, it's the simplest little gesture. It's like, it's like Memoirs of Geisha where they just turn their wrist and show it for an instant. That is just, it. there's something so sensual and intimate about it and pure and just intentional, right? And it just, it doesn't feel vulgar. It doesn't feel like crass. It's just, it's so deliberate and slow and methodical. And it's like, it just, it's on an aesthetic level that I'm like, yes, please. It's like, it's like hand motions, like hand touching. 
And then like people's like voice actors, the way that their cadence of their voice does things. I'm like, no, that's, that's all I need. <laughs> I don't need anything else. I'm good. Thank you. Yes. That's all I need is just this little, it's just the visuals, right? There's just something about it that's so intimate and I'm just here for it. But if I was Miano, I'd be like, nope, donezo. Like just Sasaki touching his nape and everything. And I understand Sasaki's like, because Sasaki is, he reminds me a little bit of um, a character in Heaven Official's Blessing. He reminds me of Hua Chong a little bit, where he's like, I am, I would like to do a lot more with you than just hold your hand. I like Sasaki's like, I would like to touch you a lot more, but he's being respectful, being like, I'm just going to take my time. But he does sneak in little gestures here and there. Like he puts his hand in, in Miano's coat pocket. He touches him. He grabs, like, he's like, is this okay? Uh, he's holding back real hard. But he respects Miano enough that he's patient, right? Which is great. And I am glad, like I said, I'm glad in this movie that they bring up that they are boyfriends, that it is a same-sex relationship. Because in Japan, they do a lot of things in BL where the character, and again, it's very cultural. I am not someone that is from that culture to know it explicitly. But there are a lot of BL series that I've read where the character is heterosexual except for this one person they're like oh i'm straight except for this one guy <laughs> and you're like in my mind my western ass thinks well then that means you're gay if you like him and then but it's like no he is he's he's straight but he he's heterosexual but he likes this one guy and it's like okay so you're heterosexual but you're demisexual for this one person okay it just you know what i mean from my cultural standpoint, we don't exactly have that here. And I'm not part of that sect of the LGBTQ plus community to understand it. So that always, it always seemed not like a cop out narratively, but it seemed like a way of saying, oh no, my character's straight. They're just into this one guy, but no, they're totally so heterosexual. Don't worry. You know, that's kind of the vibe that I got from it. And here I'm glad they don't go that route. They explicitly say, no, this is my boyfriend we are in a relationship and the sister Sasaki's sister touches on the fact that she's like oh well, we read about same-sex couples and how hard it can be for you all in society and she's like I didn't want to contribute to that stigma you know and so I'm glad they addressed it here and made it a thing and I'm also glad that Miyano and Sasaki's friends are so supportive of them they're like yeah because that's how it should be they're like yeah cool you guys like each other awesome I'm glad that it's just treated as completely normal because it should be <laughs> you know you you would think it you'd think that this would be easy be, easy breezy stuff to go off of but you know you would think but I also love how instantly supportive Miano's mom is like that was I loved that she was just like oh well you love Sasaki I love your dad it's the same thing I'm really glad of how supportive she was and just that instant message of acceptance and understanding and that it's not any different than anything else. You know, I, I was wondering if since she was so accepting because the sister had been like barging in and because they'd made a big deal out of her coming in, I was like, are they going to make her not necessarily homophobic, but I was like, are they going to make her have issues with their relationship? And it ends up not being that. She just has a knee-jerk reaction, and then she gets mad because she has the knee-jerk reaction because she knows it's wrong. I'm glad that that's the route that they took with it. Also, I really like Sasaki's room. I really like his monochromatic pillows. I love the trope. It's such a BL trope where they come in. It, it's in Given. It's in so many other BL where you're sick. You come in. I also thought of... Um, Yes, no, or maybe there's a BL called Yes, No, or Maybe. And in that series, there's like a, a sick mask kiss that happens in it. I won't spoil it. You should go read it. Um, it has a problematic ending to it, but up until the last 30 seconds, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> or I did at least. Um, but yeah, I liked the trope of going and visiting each other's sick. I don't know. I think personally, that's where I would draw the line. I know that in fiction, the mask kiss seems like a very romantic thing of like, oh my god, they kissed over the masks. In application and reality, we all went through quarantine and probably wore a mask at some point. I don't know if I'd want that fabric rubbing up against me like that. I'm not so sure. Mm. <laughs> 
And plus, I'm very much the type of person that if I'm sick, I like just need space. And I'd be like, just come back in a day. <laughs> I would look like a swamp demon. Miyano shows up and Sasaki looks like a freaking Vogue model. He looks like he's been modeling for years. He has that Victorian waif look where he's like, oh, so Miyano. And like, it looks perfectly flushed. I, you come and see me and my hair would be like tangled up and I'd look like a swamp demon. And I'd be like, get out. <laughs> That's basically the reality of it, but this is fiction, so we can overlook it. And plus, they're two guys. I don't know. I have lots of friends that, that I have lots of friends that are gay, and they're just like, they always look good, no matter what. It's frustrating. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. How dare you? How dare you look good all the time, even when you're sick? Also, Sasaki with dim big feet, meaning that he has to shop for special shoes. So it's just the, the animation in this entire movie was really nice. The damn handholding, all the sensuality, the shapes. I, you know what? I don't have to ever take pre-calculus again because I've seen all the shapes in this one movie. It's like just pff, color explosion, shapes everywhere. It's a great time. That sister, though, I can relate. Like the last thing you want is your sibling coming in and seeing you like in a relationship or, or with people. How embarrassing. But yeah. I, I do love the chocolate. I, let's be real for a hot second. Sasaki is, he's too perfect. He's too good. He has the bad boy delinquency side, but then he's also caring and understanding. And he bakes for you and bakes you like Michelin style five star desserts. What I was going to say in the reaction, but I didn't want to be a spoiler, is, and this is Kuroko's Basketball. So if you've not watched Kroko's Basketball, this will not make sense. But if you have watched Kroko's Basketball, it's not a spoiler because it's pretty evident within the first episode. But I've realized the relationship of Sasaki and Miyano is what I imagine the relationship of Kagami and Kuroko to be if they were a BL. <laughs> That's literally it! Because you have Sasaki and Kagami, two redheads who are freakishly tall, who are really good at cooking and really good at communicating and have, you know, really big emotions that they carry with them. And then you have Miano and Kuroko who are both super quiet, kind of shy, but they've got a sassy edge to them. And the moment that Miano was like, I'm not an uke, I was like, neither is Kuroko. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, that's exactly what, basically I'm convinced that the author of Sasaki and Miano watched Kuroko's basketball and was like, I want to make that a BL. <laughs> And then they couldn't make it a basketball series because it'd be too obvious. So that's why they did Kagura later. And they're like, I'll just put Kagura. Kagura is like Nishimura. <laughs> He's like a younger, softer Nishimura. I'll just insert him in here. I just, it's so good. But damn, that dessert. I can't have chocolate, but that dessert that Sasaki made Miyano, I'm like, I want that shit. That stuff looked amazing, right? But yes. Miano's mother is perfect. She has a little beauty mark. They're like perfectly in love. It's so freaking cute. They bake food together. They bake like the most exquisite desserts. I'm like, well, sign me up. I want to date Sasaki and so he can cook for me and be freakishly tall and handsome. Thank you. I love the call back to Valentine's Day and how they're, it's so cute to see how their Valentine's Day gifts have evolved from the first season where they were just these little haphazard chocolates and everything. And now it's like a full on cupcakes and muffins and Miano gives them the coffee with the haphazard little bow on it. It's so sweet, right? There was also a lot packed in this movie. Like this movie, it was only an hour, but it felt so long, like in a good way. It felt like there was a lot happening. And you had Sasaki like ruffling his hair. One thing I like is that they don't do PDA because no matter what type of relationship, no matter what your sexuality is, no matter what the case is, I am not a fan of PDA because I don't know about you all, but I've been around PDA couples it's awkward. It's awkward when you go on dates. It's awkward when you're, out, when you're out in public and they're like snogging each other every five minutes and you're like, well, okay. <laughs> it's just awkward. So I'm glad this is Aki Miano are courteous and don't do that unless they're alone in a classroom, right? I love the moon though, the full moon that Miano walks next to. That shot right there, it's really good. I love it. And so Sasaki passes his test, which is great. And uh, they're all going to go out. And that's when he runs into Ogusawara. And again, I like that Ogusawara, you know, he's like, are you serious about the BL fanboy? 
And then he's worried about, like, I just don't want to think about you two. And my girlfriend starts talking about BL. And we're like, oh, but Samara, why, why are you thinking about this? Why, why are you thinking about them, huh? Well, what's going on here? And then he's like, oh, well, the UK is the one that's always getting jumped, right? Like, from what she's told him. And that's when he's like, you know. And, again, you talk about this. One thing you don't ask somebody is... You don't ask somebody if they're the uke or the seme. You just, it's not appropriate. It's not something you ask. I like that Oguswara is like, I don't want to know. But the thing that's interesting about this is that at the time, Sasaki's like, I don't know what I am. Because he's like, I'm just into Miano, but we haven't really, we've not gotten that far to talk about ukes and semes and like who's on top, who's on bottom. He's like, we haven't really talked about this. I love the fact though that Miano kind of blurts out being like, I'm not a bottom. <laughs> I kind of love that where he's like, he's like, that's not his initial. He's like, I kind of want to be on top. I like, I like that Miano kind of blurts that out. Um, there is something about it and I don't, there is like a natural curiosity about it. I don't know how else to explain it, but I feel like if you're someone that's not, not, you know, identifying as a man and you're not in that type of relationship, there is a curiosity and I can't explain why. I think it's just human curiosity. We're like, well, what is it? You know? Uh, what does that say? And I think in fiction, we paint ideas of how that person in that relationship is. And we want to either see it be subverted or go along with it, right? And what I like about Sasaki and Miyano is that they're both kind of like, even though Miyano says he's like, I'm not an okay, even though he says it, I like that Sasaki kind of says he's a switch. He's like, I can do either or. He's like, I'll do whatever. He's like, as long as I'm with Miano, I can be whatever. And I think that's important. I think that at the end of the day, it's nice that Sasaki says it should not matter what position we're in or what role we fall into because that's fiction. In reality, we can be both. We are multifaceted. We're complex creatures. It doesn't have to be just this simple thing, right? I like that. I like that that's kind of where that conversation ends up at and they don't necessarily tell us it's great right but then man the whole classroom scene i like that it starts out with sasaki realizing that he didn't like coming to school before and then because of miano he enjoyed coming to school that last year i'm like that's so sweet i like that miano kind of became a source of motivation for him to go that he liked being there and then, and then it just kind of like, I like that it starts out. He's like, oh, I just want to try this thing out from a manga where I'm like having you sit on my lap. <laughs> and it's almost like what I love about it is that Miano seems kind of uncomfortable in that moment because that is very much the, the, oh, you're the UK, you're sitting in my lap and then I'll kiss you like this and kind of take charge of the situation. I like that Miano's like, no, no, I don't want to be in that position. I that's not me. I like that he's vocal about it. I like that he speaks up and he tells him, he's like, look, he's like, we're at school one. And he's like, oh, I'll promise I won't do any more than kiss you. And like his hand sliding up his back. Ah. He's like, can't we just stay like this a little bit longer? And then that's when he's like, he's like, no, you didn't hurt me at all. He's like, I, I liked the idea of kissing you here, but we're at school. This is kind of, this feels so weird. And he's like, uh, senpai, I'm not a new gay. Mm -hmm. And Sasaki's like, oh yeah, right. And I don't blame, I don't blame Miyano for not wanting to like go full on hardcore making out and doing it there in the classroom because he has to go to school there next year. <laughs> he's not graduating yet. Um, I was thinking of Daoki saying classmates, like I said, it's a spicier version of this. Um, in that series, um, there is a very um, sexy time classroom scene, but they're both graduating, so they're never going to go there again. So it's fine. They won't have any lingering memories like they have to sit in the classroom and be like, oh yeah, that's where we like did it over in the corner. They're not going to have that problem. But Miano, I get where he's like, uh, I've got to go to school here next year. This will be really awkward. Let's not do this. And plus, if we're caught, it'll be super bad. So let's not do this. But then, yeah, he's telling Sasaki, he's like, I'm not like a manga character. I am. There's more to me than that. And he's like, that's what I wanted to say, but I could only think of how to describe it in BL terms. And Sasaki laughing and being like, it's fine. Let me try again. And just, 
Oh my God. Like the way that he slowly, slowly puts Miano's head on the floor, like using his hand to cradle him saying, I'm only going to kiss him. That's all I'm going to do again. It, it's not explicit. It's not vulgar. There's not like any sounds or anything, but it's just like, mm, it's just so well done. And then I love Sasaki saying, as long as Miano's happy, I'll be whatever he wants. Ruining relationships for everyone for years to come. Ruining our chances. Ruining us being satisfied. <laughs> With anybody but Sasaki, I'm like, oh my gosh. And then just, ugh. It's just so well done. That scene there. And then the sign where he's like, it's going to be really hard to stop kissing you with you talking like this. And then the two of them, he's like, I'm just kidding. But the two of them, but I lied. Oh, I love the color spot and both their eyes are like glowing embers. They're like on fire. Oh, and I love that they're just both so passionate in that moment. Mm -hmm. I could, I mean, I'm going to be hypocritical in saying that it doesn't matter, but I mean, Sasaki is like a powery bottom. I could see that for sure. Um, or just being, well, or just being soft. I don't think, I think Miano exudes like the control and power in the relationship. And Sasaki is just like, I will do whatever you say, but I'm going to defend you from anybody that tries to mess with you. <laughs> I feel like Sasaki is very open to whatever Miano wants to do, right? But I just cannot picture Miano as, I can't picture Miano being like, being like the submissive type that doesn't seem like him at all right and Sasaki saying I should be fine with just kissing but I want more than that now they don't do more than that but the thought is there and then Miano being like I had a BL trope happen at school I love it and I love that it's Miano's birthday right after that I also love that Miano is now compared to season one open to these types of scenarios happening in season one. He was like, I don't want my life to be like a BL, but in this, he's kind of like, well, you know, the thing of it is, it's not going to be like a BL. It's more complicated than that, but there's no point in not having fun and enjoying our relationship. Right. And then that dang, that dang dessert is like the best thing ever. And then, uh, I love that Sasaki stands up saying he's not my Kohai. He's my boyfriend. And the sister is like, oh, that's why you came to visit. And she says, but why? And that's when she gets sad and runs out because she questioned it. She questioned the relationship and ran away. And I like that Sasaki is like, well, we're not going to worry about it. Miano's like, no, 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 no. Again, one of my favorite tropes in all of romantic series is the trope of communication. Let these people communicate. And I love it. And I love that Sasaki is questioning what he should do and Miano was like we're gonna go find your sister we're gonna talk this out like adults like young adults we're gonna go hash it out it's fine but I'm not gonna let you sit here and wallow in misery and be upset when we could solve this problem right now he's like no I'm not gonna do that that's not fair to you we're not gonna do that and so they go off and he's like oh me looking for her that's a change because he's like I'm usually the one to run off and he's like I can't bring myself to be too forceful with my sister and that then we go back to we go back to the time when she smacks him and they like got in a fight and hurt each other and I think the guy that's in the flashback is the boyfriend too I think that is the case because she smacks him and then he pushes her and he thinks back to like when they got in the argument because when he goes back to the past, it shows the guy standing next to the door and she's apologizing and saying it wasn't really a fight, but I knocked her down and it hurt. Mm, and she got a scar. So I think that she smacked him. Okay, he got in a fight with somebody and she smacked him being like, you should know better. And that's when he pushed her down and he realized he was bigger than most people and was stronger than he looked. And he hurt her and then he felt bad about it. And so they apologized like siblings do and got over it, you know. But I I like the idea that we learn a little bit more about Sasaki's family. That his family isn't necessarily bad, but they're very laid back to the point where they just don't really get involved. 
And whereas Miano's mom is like all there for him, like all front and center. Like he said, she'll be with the camera front row of graduation watching him. He's like, my family doesn't really get involved like that. And I like that because it's very realistic. Like a lot of family members are like that. I know a lot of friends whose families are just kind of like, eh, and they're kind of like just standoffish. And I'm like, for me, my family's always been like really involved. And so to be in a family that's kind of standoffish and not really involved is is very foreign to me, but it's a lot of people have families like that. So I like that the series kind of develops that a little bit. And so then they they meet up with the boyfriend. The boyfriend is freaking tall. The boyfriend is taller than Sasaki. Can we talk about that? Like when they meet on the corner, he is taller than Sasaki. He has like the earrings in his ears. And of course, our redheads both fall for dark haired skinny boys, right? But he's got like a bunch of earrings and she's like, I'm so sorry for saying a horrible thing to you earlier. And that's when she talks like, while, you know, the boyfriend talks to Sasaki being like, hey, it's okay. Miano talks to, also, it sucks that she has to, that the sister has to deal with the two friends that, it, they look like primary colors. You have the girl with the bluish black hair and the girl with the blonde hair, but that they kind of say some insensitive things, you know, about same-sex couples that gets her feeling uncomfortable because she's like she didn't think the same thing they did but she didn't know what to say and now that her brother is in a relationship with another guy she feels like she's contributing to the conversation by reflexively denying the relationship and so you know she apologizes and I like that Miano's like well people change all the time it's okay it's like you care about about Shume-san don't you and I love that the boyfriend looks back at Sasaki like, oh, he said shume son. He's like, listen to this. He points over and gets him to listen. He's like, hey, listen to this conversation. She's like, of course I do. And then he's like, oh, my God. He hears him call him by his first name. He's like, will you help me make shume son happy? I love that they are on a first name basis. I love it. I love that they're on a first name basis when they're, like, really intimate with each other. It's great. He's like, should I call you Yoshikazu? I don't know. It's just so romantic. I I don't know. There's something about, I wish in Western culture we had like the secret names. Like you don't say, because here in Western culture, it's like, oh, your name is Romania Black. And it's just, that's the name. But I love that Japanese culture has like the one name is like secret. It's intimate. You don't say it unless you guys are really close. I just think there's something very romantic about that. Oh, it's great. But then we get to the graduation practice. We have um, Hanzawa wasn't in there a lot, but he was great throughout it. And then, of course, we get the, the cosmetology student that is practicing on the cheek. And then Hanzawa is like, oh, Miano, you strike me as being jealous. And he is. Mm -hmm. Which is so interesting. Because, again, we establish uh, Miano wanting to be kind of the power of the relationship. And I like that Miano kind of asserts himself a little bit in this movie. It's great. And also you have Hirano, who the boys are like, oh, why did Sasaki run off after Miano? Do you think that they're... And Hirano's like, we're not going to talk about it. It's not our business. Like, he's peacekeeper. He's breaking it up. Which, again, I feel like Hirano constantly takes care of people. So if Kagura ever confesses to Hirano, how's that going to go? How is he going to take it? I want to know, but then I don't want to know. <laughs> right? I want to, but I don't want to. And so then, I like the movie had just, like, random manga phrases and manga, like, lines being instruct, being, like, sorted throughout them. But, yeah, I love Sasaki stopping him and saying, Yoshikazu, I want to talk to you about this. Like, wait. And Miano's like, it's that I was jealous. I know it wasn't real. But I was jealous thinking that someone else had kissed you. And I just, I love it. And I love that Sasaki's like, you're jealous for me? What? What? I love it. And Miano's like, you're happy about this? And he's like, well, yeah, it means you're into me. It's fine. We both know that there's no, nothing to be jealous about. It's just, it's very interesting. So yeah, and then they all graduate. It's super cute. I like that Miano gets the approval of all the bros. 
Hirano kind of... Hirano is interesting, like, the last one to really acknowledge it, which I'm, like, in denial much, because Kagura likes you just as well. Mm-hmm. And then I like the idea of... Sasaki looks really good with his coat on, with his suit jacket, of giving his suit jacket to Miyano for him to fill out as he gets bigger. And then it's just so sweet, like, the way that he... The way that he, like, tilts his head, the way he, like, grabs hold of Miyano. It's so cute. I love the walkabout that they do, and it shows all of the little snippets and scenes. It's like a highlights reel from season one. Super cute. Really cute stuff. It was really well handled. And then they get to that room. That room where he's like, I wanted to kiss him back then. Will I do it now? And I'm like, as he's sitting there, his tall, lanky body, I'm like, you're going to do it now. And I love that as the breeze goes, he puts the coat over him. Like he's going to go to kiss him. And the one guy with the girlfriend sees. Mm-hmm. And then texts Miano being like, it was a close call. <laughs> it's probably a good thing that Sasaki is graduating so that he can't kiss you at school because all the PDA. It's like, no, save that. Save that for when you're home, right? But it's so cute. And then was that Kagura with them? Is that Kagura showing up at the end there? I was so obsessed, but it looks like it's Kagura showing up with the carnation. Yes, right? And then Hirano's giving a head pat to him. Is that not right? Yes, all the different sparkles and everything. I feel like it was Kagura. Yeah, well, Kagura's crying at the end there. I like Kagura crying as Hirano is like, although, wait a minute! Wait! Hirano's graduating! Kagura! I have this all wrong! Hirano's graduating! You can confess now! Yes! Do this! I've been wrong this whole time! I'm like, if Hirano's leaving, Kagura, confess! Now's the time! Uh, now I do want to know what happens. <laughs> now that I know that they're not going to be confined in a room together, I do want to know what happens, actually. Oh, well. Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> now this changes everything. I, I do, I do want to know what's going to happen. So, man, this was freaking adorable. I loved this so much. And I have talked nearly as long as this movie. Um, I really loved this. This was super, super cute. I would love to read the manga now. I would love to read Kagura and Hirano to see if there is a confession to see where it goes. The only thing is, I don't know what future projects they're going to do with Sasaki and Miyano. A part of me wants to read it, but then a part of me is like, no, I want to wait and see it animated because the animation does so well with it that I'm willing to wait. But man, I like want to go back and rewatch this now. <laughs> So this was the, the boost of sugar I needed in my life. I'm really happy with it. I'm really satisfied with it. Um, I hope you all are too. I hope you enjoyed this reaction discussion. I cannot wait to hear your comments down below. But, oh my God, y'all. Mwah. Mwah. I just, just could not praise it more. There definitely needs to be more BL animated. And I feel like there needs to be more variety like Sasaki and Miyano to show people that if you are just wanting romance, but not the spiciness, that there are examples out there and you can watch this and be fine. So, but in any case, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care. And yeah, I am going to be looking forward to hopefully some more Sasaki and Miyano uh, anime, hopefully in the future. But until then, I'll see y'all later at future reactions.